Hey friends, since this trials weekend was on multiplex and that map features a lot longer angles, I decided to shake the dust off of Mida Multi Tool and the classic Mida Mini Tool and challenge myself to succeed with both of these and make a fun build. Obviously, if I want to go flawless, I just take, let's say, Solar Dawn Blade, eat a grenade, heat rises, float in the air on some off angle, and hit players who can't look up. It's a very, very easy way for me to diff players. I wanted to try something a little bit more thematic. I went for Kepri Sting, throw a smoke, get wall hacks. I still have my radar up while I aim down sights. I can pre-proc, no distractions, since I know exactly where my opponent is, and maybe I can diff them if I'm standing at around 70 meters. From 47 to 70 meters, I can diff them. Mida Multi-Tool got buffed, but not in a way you would expect. If you were high resilience, like I think 8, 9, or 10, for 10 for sure though, you have to hit them four times in the head. But if you have Precision Instrument, or if they're lower resilience, it's three head, one body. And that amount of forgiveness helps Mida Multi-Tool so much, but since I only see high resiliences, I never get the value out of it. These are the Aspect Fragments. Keep in mind that if I drop my mobility down to like 6, the benefits of Mida Multi and Mini Tool don't seem to apply to my dodge cooldown, so I just don't think they're there. For sure though, both of these are a lightweight weapon. Then these are my mods. Keep in mind I have a Surge on each of these, because they do tangibly change the crit ratio. So if I have a Kinetic Surge, I can 3-head one body. I go way too scientific in this video with Mida Multi-Tool, and why I just don't really vibe with it, despite it being an okay enough weapon for every scenario, I guess it fits the exotic theme, but I do think it's outdated, and maybe we should look at more synergy. Like, Sturm and Drang holds up so good. Ace of Spades holds up so good in the modern meta. This is just incomparable. It really is. So I suggest that Bungie in the future add something more to this Mida synergy. Make it crazier straight speed. Make it inherent harmony. Ma master of arms. Master of Mida. Uh, give me original Radiant Dance Machine Peacekeeper style strafing with just this combo. Something like that. Anything. So first we're going to do some bullet bending test. This is 86 meters. This isn't a realistic scout angle, but it does come up on some maps. I just want to demonstrate how much the bullets bend and how much they do not. Nothing. Move it in. That should be good. Yeah, easy headshot. Let's drop it down a little bit. Nothing. Drop it down more. Body shot. We compare it to a high range version of the same archetype. This does have explosive payload but doesn't make that big of a difference. That one looked way better. Try to move it out a little bit. This is looking fairly similar to Mida, if not worse. Still, that little amount of range does help. And now we're going to compare it to the better archetype. First, let's pay attention to these hitboxes. Body shot. Headshot. This is the clear winner. Like, it, it isn't even close. This is Mida's distance at which it has to hit an extra bullet unrealistic that you come to these type of distances but they do exist when you start dealing with floating dawn blades looking for those opportunities to out ttk other scouts with jade rabbit or with box breathing let me go grab a box breathing let's try full auto i'm gonna control for recoil see what happens did better than i thought it would moving on to hung jury i expect this to be the bullet vendor of everything i've tested so far it's like perfectly statted to win this test That's our winner. Jade Rabbit's pretty good though, and you don't have to get a specific roll. And you don't have to hold aim down sights the entire time to proc box breathing. You can just shoot. We're gonna try full rate of fire from there and see if it three taps. This is why I think Jade Rabbit is superior. Let's go see how Mida does in its intended distance. Should be hitting 65s. Now we can see Mida do the same thing So yeah, that's really, really good. And when you want to compare this to other guns, it's still going to perform 
really, really good. This is not a max range messenger, by the way. It's about exactly 70 meters. You go beyond this, Jade Rabbit eats it for breakfast. Box Breathing eats it for breakfast. If you go below this, well, check this out. We're going to start walking into Igneous Hammer territory. So this is now messenger territory. So 47 meters to 70 meters. That is Mida's operating distance. So to help us visualize the entire loadout strength, I just made a very, very quick range chart where if you see red, that means it loses the duel. If you see orange, it loses mostly. If you see yellow, you can sometimes win. And if you see green, this is where you're going to win. Now let's talk about the Mida mini tool and the Callus mini tool. Real quick, I want to rapid fire the differences between all the mini tool options. We are at damage drop off. So check this 21 normally, 20 now, or 19. We could take it back even further if we wanted to, but for now, let's just stay at 19. That's the classic mini tool. The callus, you have to walk it back a little bit more. So now we're at 21. So let's go back to the classic mini tool and just see how it fires at 21. See how it feels, this mouse and keyboard. That did pretty good, all things considered. Let's upgrade to the Callus Mini Tool. 100 recoil direction, it does make a difference. And tap the trigger for more accuracy. That is amazing. Very, very easy shooting experience. Then we have Funnel Web, which has just a tad more range. Which means I would have to walk it back if I want some drop off. So still within that 21, essentially the same gun, but keep in mind, Funnel Web can have full bore, which would be even better. And despite taking a small step back, pretty good, all things considered. So if I am an aimbot and never miss, I have to add one extra bullet with all three of these. So truly not that bad. We're starting to get closer to a 0.8 time to kill. The problem is, if we add one more bullet to Drang, look at this distance. That's very close. So let's see if it five taps. I shot an extra bullet. I don't think it mattered, but seasonal artifact might have kicked in there. That was mouse and keyboard. That is a five tap. At crafted mini tool damage drop off, Drang still matches it in time to kill. 0.8 seconds and arguably an easier shooting experience on a controller. I felt like doing a post commentary here. I'm kind of just chilling, reclined in my seat, and I'll just tell you what I observe. As far as my thoughts on this map, the more you play it, the more you recognize common challenge angles, and the map becomes a little bit smaller when you know what you're allowed to slide between and survive. So depending on where the starter zone is, I usually take a safe path to get outside. So yeah, immediately snap to the right, go to the safe path. There is a common jump up angle and a see-through window that you can use to get a lot of information. And usually, I heard shooting right there. That's why I jumped up. I heard my teammates shoot. So I knew I could jump up and I knew I had to get active, use my dodge to get away from the heat rises, and line up a smoke to handle the revive. Excellent round. But there's a little window right there you can use to get free information which is very advantageous. I also run around with my rocket all the time because my rocket has the radar booster perk. I would put that on the mini tool, but for this gameplay, I wanted to make sure I had a uh, free hand grip mod. I just body blocked my teammate. That was completely on me. I hate when that happens. My peripheral vision is on the window. I can jump here early if I hear anything. It looks like I did anyway. The feed let me know. So I'm just trying to get in close, optimal distance for the mini tool. The radar aimed on sights came in clutch there. The grenade might have flushed him out. He might have decided to fly at me. I really don't know. And now I'm just jiggle peeking this cover. Maybe I should have helped teammate. Not 100% sure. I'm still learning uh, how quickly I can get to places on this map. 
Yeah, I think I was noting that hip fire grip came up a lot right there. Still an outside zone. It's not power round, so I don't have to interact with the island at all. Am I taking the common shell? No, not yet. Okay, so I did try to get some information there with the third person dodge. And I'm kind of lost as to where the fight's happening. But I, it looks like I did find a straggler, but they back me off. I throw a smoke. I'm expecting wall hacks. I guess that's why I was aiming down sides like that. I didn't get it. Now I have the walls. Now I can start taking uh, more challenges. But the enemy team honestly did a really j a good job of getting crossfire set up right there. I had some ugly aiming. I couldn't identify where that third player was, so I was kind of panicking and looking to put in any amount of damage to try to back off one of the players because I was worried that they were just going to fly on my teammates and I was going to have to 1v3 in a second. But I was actively trying to uh, contribute to the team. So power round, I want to play the power of the scout rifle. I will pretty much always lose if I take that left chow, so I'm just going to smoke it for wall info. And now that I see where they are, I can start spreading out and just keeping them off the power ammo. Of course, the zone is eventually a problem, so I just have to put enough damage in and threaten them with the mini tool by chasing them, or faking chasing them, to allow my teammates to pick up the power ammo. Looks like we got a kill as a team, which is great. When they have to constantly jump like that, they're never winning. Even if they had perfect in-air accuracy, ooh, some ugly shots. It doesn't matter because we can see them through the see-through wall. So they will never win that. They have to commit to that trajectory, whereas we can just strafe. So yeah, teammates bailed me out of that one. I didn't know what to do if we didn't get that power ammo. I think this is the ugliest round of all of them. Do I finally have the confidence to take the common shell? Yes, I do. We're four up. Pull the rocket launcher out for that radar booster. I always want to like cut the pie there and isolate a fight. Obviously, if I wide swing, two people can hit me. I don't want that. There we go. There's the face peak. Teammate goes down, so I start getting active and closing the gap. I truly don't know where the enemies are, but I deduce they're in the right corner. And I can see two of them from the radar. I throw a grenade to try to have both of them like slide into the grenade. I should die here, but I don't. I think they missed a shot and the body shot changes. Now I'm just playing my SMG since they have to approach me. Teammates got some good team shot there. Hit fire grip goes in. Dodge, get all my health back because it picks up the orb on the dodge. So I think this showed the strengths of Mida Multi and Mini Tool, but it's still such an outdated loadout. It needs something else. I previously ran this with Sir Arachnid to get anti-flinch and use the grapples to get into the right distance or to get away from the wrong distance, and that works so much better than Kepri Sting. But Kepri Sting was... No, I'm not even going to lie to you. This was not fun. This was pain. <laughs> this was a terrible loadout. 